Well, it's so wonderful for us to come together around the things of God. And on this 19th day of prayer and fasting, we know that we are uh, coming to the close of this, uh, but I want to encourage you, let's continue to press in. Let's run hard to the finish line of this time of prayer and fasting. And I want you to know that your God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. The psalmist says, as the deer pants for brooks of water, my soul yearns, longs for you. And so our hearts and flesh cry out for the living God. Today, we want to cry out to God for our government. We're not too far from uh, the elections where uh, in this nation we will choose uh, who our next leader is going to be. But in the midst of all of this, ultimately, it is God that exalts one and brings down another. Uh, authority is ultimately under God's control. And it's been said that a nation gets the leaders that they deserve. There are some things that we see in the Word of God concerning how we should approach um, praying for our leaders. In Jeremiah 29, verse 7, this was when the children of Israel were taken into a foreign land and God was telling them how to operate and function in that foreign land. In Jeremiah 29, verse 7, it says, And work for the peace and prosperity of the city where I sent you into exile. Well, right now we are, we are pilgrims on this earth, but our ultimate home is in the presence of God. And so uh, we want to work for the peace and prosperity of the nation that we are living in. And God says to do that. Uh, where I sent you into exile, pray to the Lord for it, for its welfare will determine your welfare. So we want to pray for the land. We want to pray for our leaders. Uh, the Bible says for, for, to, that we should pray for those who are in authority. And in Proverbs 29, verse 2, it says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, the people groan. Righteousness exalts a nation. And as believers, we must prioritize righteousness. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Our, not our righteousness. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. But we want to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The government of man will fail. The government of man needs redemption. The government of man, the system of man, needs to be uh, restored and needs to be healed. The system of man is sick. And that's why the kingdoms of this world, the Bible says, are destined to become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And so when we pray, we pray, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So as we are praying for the government, our, the government of our land, ultimately, we want to see God's kingdom come. We want to pray that the leaders that are in place, uh, we honor them. I don't believe in calling our leaders names. I don't believe in disrespecting uh, those that God has anointed. If David respected Saul, uh, we can't just disrespect leaders who God has placed in authority. Authority ultimately comes from God. And so we don't call leaders names. We don't belittle them. We pray for them. We pray for those who are in position of powers. That's what believers do. And it's a shame when believers are acting like the world over politics, when my kingdom, Jesus says, is not of this world. We pray for our leaders, and uh, we want to pray that we have leaders that fear God. We want to pray that we have leaders that will heed the voice of the prophet in the land. We want to pray that our leaders, in the fear of God, uh, with the power and the influence they have uh, to uh, enact policies and, and to make laws 
that those laws will be in line with the biblical principles uh, that bring life and healing and blessing uh, to families and to the community and to the nation. We want to pray that our leaders would honor the people of God, the nation of Israel, uh, not to put a rubber stamp on everything they do, but they will recognize that God has made an eternal covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and their descendants. And as a nation, uh, we will not seek to uh, harm or mess with the land of Israel, but we would uh, in reverencing God, seek to see the Jewish people come to know that the Messiah that we worship is their Messiah. We want to pray for our leaders that uh, they will speak against what is evil, that they will not allow evil to be celebrated. There are some things that are evil. Let me make it clear. I know this will make some people upset, but the Bible says, you saw my unformed body. You saw me in the womb when I was yet unformed. Uh, the Bible says when Mary met Elizabeth, the baby in her womb leaped. Uh, that child, that miracle of God is sacred. Now, the Bible says, I set before you life and death. Choose life. Choose life that both you and your descendants may live. Let me make it clear. We're not being political. We're being biblical when we say that abortion is wrong. We see that old demon, the demon that we see in the Old Testament. They had Baal. They had Ashtoreth. They had Molech. Molech was the sacrificing of the children for their own convenience. They would sacrifice the innocent for their convenience, and that brought the judgment of God. That's why the children of Israel were taken into captivity for doing things that were patently wrong. God told them in Deuteronomy, if you practice what these pagan nations are practicing, I will remove my blessing. But now we've made that a political matter. No, it is a biblical matter. Choose life. Yes, God has given us choice. He's given us the power to choose life. Uh, when we talk about, let me make it clear, uh, as we're praying and believing God, uh, because our whole minds have been blinded uh, through unbelief. And so that believers don't even know what the Bible says on matters uh, that we think are political matters. No, we got to pray for our government uh, that they will not do things that will speak against rebellion against the word of God. Uh, when, when we are, are, are promoting things that are anti-Christ, uh, when we say it's a woman's choice, no, a man and a woman, they choose to sin in most cases. I know there are some where uh, there, there, there is a greater evil uh, of rape, but in many cases, men and women are making the choice to sin. Whenever you choose to have sex, you are choosing, uh, if you're healthy, to bring a life into the world. That's where the choice was made. But when we make that choice, uh, we don't get to choose the consequences of our decisions. And oftentimes, uh, what we are doing when we promote uh, unrighteousness, that is a reproach, uh, we are promoting evil. No, we don't have the right to do that. Uh, we don't have the right to do whatever we want with our bodies. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And so whenever I marry someone, uh, we make it clear uh, that if there's any just cause why these two should not be just for not be lawfully joined together, lawfully according to God's law, not man's law. If they should not lawfully be joined together, speak now or forever hold their peace. Be it well assured, if you're coupled together other than what God's word or law, your matrimony is not lawful. I don't care what the state says. John the Baptist, he said to Herod, he said, I know you chose to marry your brother's wife, but in the eyes of God, it's not lawful. And we have embraced laws that are against God's word. And God is not unrighteous. Uh, to look over and gloss over sin. Let's pray for our leaders. Let's pray for the people of God. I want to, when we pray for the, for the, for the government, I got to pray for myself uh, because uh, God is not looking to the government of man. He says, if my people who are called by my name, 
Heavenly Father, right now we humble ourselves before you. And Lord, we pray that our minds will be renewed to your word. We pray, Lord, that as we approach that ballot box, we approach it in the fear of God. As we are praying for our leaders, as we are praying that they hear from you, that they reverence you, that they fear you. Lord God, Lord, may we approach uh, these matters in the fear of God. May we not abuse the poor. Lord, may we not use power to take advantage of those that have less than we have. But Lord, may uh, even in our politics, may we remember the poor. May we have leaders uh, that judge righteously in the name of Jesus with balanced scales. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, for our leaders, that our leaders will humble themselves and that they will fall on your face and they'll recognize that any power or authority they have, the only reason why they have it is as Jesus says, it was given to them from above. So we pray, Lord, for our leaders. We pray for our nation. We pray for our elections. May there be no violence. May there be no loss of life. Lord, may we be civil, our Lord, in our conduct as we approach the elections. May we fear you, Lord, and humble ourselves before you as we choose. May we take time to pray. May we take time to look and see what you have to say concerning who we place in positions of power, even in the smaller districts even in the schools, in the, with, with the judges that we appoint, with the smaller courts, our Lord, with the appellate courts, may we fear you in this time, in the name of Jesus, to the glory of God. We pray, Lord God, our Lord, for uh, Vice President Kamala Harris. We pray, Lord God, our Lord, for uh, uh, President, former President Donald Trump. We pray, Lord God, that they will fear you, that they will be saved, that as they see these areas of their lives that are inconsistent with your word, that they will repent. They will repent and not care what people think, but, but, but only care what you think. They will only desire what may it be to please you in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, to the glory of God. God bless you as we continue in this time of prayer and fasting. May God bless America so that America can be a blessing to the rest of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.